on some very interesting news in South Africa. Apparently, the hero of South Africa, Mr. Nelson Mandela, was not in prison for 27 years. And if you want to find out how many years he was in prison, stay tuned because I'm going to play a video narrated by Imam Ahmed. Imam Ahmed is narrating the story, telling the history, telling the history tales, the honest, brutal truth about what really happened in Robin Island, mentioning the likes of President Jacob Zuma, why he was arrested, what happened during his arrest, mentioning all sorts of things that happened even at the Cordessa, what happened in Cordessa, and all of these things you're going to hear in this clip. And you must really listen attentively so you can understand. Because it seems like many of the history that is being told in textbooks is a lie. But there's a man who still lives to tell the tale. Take a listen at this. We have thus characterized the year 1994 to express the deep seated hope of all our people. Uh, nobody has been liberated, neither the oppressed people nor the oppressor. When you strike a compromise between the oppressor and the oppressed, something has gone wrong. And that was reflected in what was lauded as a good chance to have reconciliation, which was the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Ironically, 22,000 people turned blacks, appeared before the commission, and very few of the oppressors. Uh, mm -hmm the majority of the whites. Yes. What was also very disappointing was the fact that the people who orchestrated the apartheid terrorist regime, not just the apartheid regime, because they terrorized not only the 40 million indigenous people, mm -hmm. but also the surrounding African states. And neither the Bruderbond, which was established in 1918 as a secret organization, was subpoenaed by the TRC, mm -hmm. neither the judiciary, your magistrates, judges and prosecutors who implemented the apartheid laws, nor the multinational companies who benefited the most from apartheid. Mm -hmm. And of course, the politicos like uh, ex-president P.W. Buerta, who what, were responsible would, for these. What would, what would you say, Imam, to people who still see people like Nelson Mandela as heroes and see him as a source of inspiration? Do you feel that he was an integral part of the compromise or was he hoodwinked to a certain degree? No, he wasn't hoodwinked. Uh, in his case in 1964, when he appeared in court, he made a statement which was later quoted in the financial uh, mail and other business uh, magazines that he has never ever been opposed to uh, capitalism and that was the cue so they already started trying to get him on board so they softened yeah. him up and that was the reason for removing him from other comrades on the island who were in the Ravonia trial um, accidentally I bumped into uh, the second in command of MK and that's Mkonto Wesizwe Mkonto Wesizwe mm -hmm. and uh, he called me and he mistook me for somebody else for an MK member which I've never been and he said to me uh, Ismail which is not my name if they think they can strike a deal with Nelson Mandela and leave us out they are making a big mistake mm -hmm. so already there was a split which was observable right that they knew that Nelson Mandela had been taken off the island in order to set in process the negotiations. No, there's a big difference uh, between Zuma. Zuma was on Robben Island for 10 years. Nelson Mandela was there for 18 years. And we just like to correct an historical error which says that he was on Robben Island for 27 years. That's mm -hmm. not true. The oldest serving political prisoner on Robben Island was in fact Jeff Masimula, who spent 27 years there and he was in fact assassinated in what was called a motor car accident shortly after he was released. So he definitely was the longest uh, serving prison on Robben Island. And he was a member of the Pan-Africanist Congress that, of Azania, yes? That is yes? correct, a very staunch member okay. who had received life imprisonment way back in 1963. Right. So Nelson Mandela obviously uh, was the key to bringing about the changes 
And a lot of the deals that took place, both in Lusaka and London, were directly uh, related to him and involved him. When I was in Polsma prison, uh, way back in the 80s, that would have been around about 86, I was arrested and held in detention. Uh, we saw Nelson Mandela leaving the prison complex dressed in a suit, and of course later on we discovered that these meetings were with Kwebi Kutsi, um, one of the cabinet ministers. Mm -hmm. So obviously later on they confirmed that and even meetings with the head of intelligence, Dr. Neil Barnard and others. Mm -hmm. So it was a long process which started way back in 1982 and uh, of course you had the Dakar conference and other feelers that were sent out. Yeah. But it was very well orchestrated. Yes. Um, the people who needed the settlement badly were in fact the multinational companies, the financiers, the banks, the investors, mm -hmm. because the country obviously was going down a very slippery economic slope. Mm -hmm. uh, they got them on board. Why did they choose the ANCs? Because the ANC has always been very comfortable with the concept multi-racism. And I found it ironical that Elizabeth Nelson Mandela, uh, on two occasions, one is a set of uh, essays written by Robben Island prisoners, and edited by Mac Maharaj called Reflections uh, from Robben Island. And the first essay is by Nelson Mandela. Mm -hmm. And in there he still refers to people as coloreds and as blacks and Africans. Mm -hmm. um, when he was at Wembley shortly after his release, he says the ANC is a non-racial organization, therefore all races are welcome. Right. Now, that obviously is conceptual confusion. Mm -hmm. Uh, many of our top thinkers in South Africa, when they say, when we called ourselves Africans, we meant that we were anti-racist. And right. very few people have used the concept anti-racism. We also draw a distinction between racism and racialism. Mm -hmm. Racism is based on statutes, on law, and it's enforced by the police, the courts, and eventually the army. Whereas racialism is when you and I discriminate against each other on whatever flimsy reason. And the fact that it is still very much part of South African life is the BEE, Black Economic Empowerment, and Affirmative Action, and also the outbreaks of xenophobia just consolidates that particular viewpoint that racism and racialism is alive and well in South Africa. Well, for a lot of people, um, the Pan-Africanist Congress of Azania is little known as a political entity. Yes. But everything you are articulating is very much in tune uh, with what they say as well, because you, uh, once upon a time you were a member, yes. and it was led by Robert Mangaliso Sobukwe, who is almost written out of the history of South yes. Africa. Now, I'd like to ask you, what has happened to the PAC and that element of political thinking within South Africa now? Yeah, you are quite right. Uh, Robert Sobukwe was on Roman Island. He was held there for six years, and he was the only prisoner in the world who was held on Robben Island as a political prisoner due to a law passed in Parliament just for him. Yeah. And it's known as the Subukwe Clause. And every year they had to renew his detention. And they had a very good reason because they compared him to the late Albert Luthuli, Chief Albert Luthuli, and said, why couldn't you just ban Subukwe but release him from Robben Island? And the then uh, Minister of Justice said, it's like comparing a heavyweight boxer with a flyweight boxer. Hmm. Subukwe had a lot of clout, and his most important clout was inte intellectual. And that sadly, that heritage has not been very well looked after, because what is now called, people called coloreds, he rejected and said, those who are called coloreds are in fact indigenous Africans because they're descendant from mothers or fathers who were indigenous. Uh, and if I could interrupt you a little bit, uh, um, he's the only African who I've heard defining uh, an African, not by the color of their skin or even by their heritage, but yes. by their love of the motherland Africa. And he saw that as the only way to resolve the contradictions to do with racial heritage within South Africa. Did you agree with that? Yes, I fully agree with that. Yeah. That is why I eventually joined the PSC I was fortunate enough to serve for some period as chairman of the Western Cape mm -hmm. and subsequently as national secretary general. Uh, of course, I have now left because obviously 
uh, a lot of infighting and splinter groups arose, uh, 